Who else is there? I can see. Yeah, Pio Antonio. Can you hear me, Pio Antonio? Sanova, Sha. Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Antonio, okay? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. It's nice to know everyone can hear me clear and cut, right? Okay. I'm fine. George is saying, Hi, George. How are you? Someday I would like to see all of you one by one, okay? And I would like to listen to you one by one. Because for me it is very important to know my students, to know my friends. Hi Rashid, yeah, how are you doing? You okay? I'm fine. That's good, nice to know. Okay. Let's go, let's restart, okay? Do you know what we are going to study today? It's managerial economics chapters. We are studying uh, the elasticity, a uh, price elasticity of demand. Okay, that's what we are going to study today. I will see like how... Uh, like uh, price, change of price uh, affects the quantity demanded. Okay, that's what we are going to see today. If the price changes, how it affects demands. That's what we are going to see today in detail. Okay, if we, if we could not finish it today, then what we will do, half of the portion of the lecture, we will try to understand in the next class. So we'll try to cover as much as can as much as possible. Yeah, see, okay, now I can... I don't know, one second. Okay, that's fine. So everyone can see the slide I have got uploaded, yeah, please? Okay, that's nice. Okay, let's move then. See what elasticity is ex exactly, try to understand. Basically, elasticity is change or capacity to change. It allows us to analyze supply and demand with greater precision. I mean, what happens if we study elasticity of price or elasticity of demand that allows us to analyze supply and demand with greater precision? Right? Okay. And it is a measure of how much buyers and sellers respond to change in market condition. If the price change, how it is responded. I mean, how the customer, they respond to the product. If the price change, what happened? Okay, that's what we are going to see today. I'm going to switch off my camera as we've been told to switch off in five minutes time. So I'll turn it in the last session ten minutes again. Right? Okay. Now see, okay, let's go to the next one. You understand elasticity means like the change. I mean, uh, how it is amended, how the changes, is, how changes take place. Okay, let's go to the next, next thing. Next slide, see. The elasticity of demand, the price elasticity of demand. That's what we are exactly going to study today. The price elasticity of demand. Okay, I will, we will see how price, change of price affects the quantity demanded. Now see, the price elasticity of demand is a measure of how much the quantity demanded of a good response to a change in the price of that good. Clear? I have already told you. So it is a measure of how much the quantity demanded of a good or products or merchandise or commodity response to a change in the price of that good. When we talk about elasticity, that responsiveness is always measured in percentage terms. So always remember, normally, what we, when we talk about the elasticity, so that is always measured in percentage. Soon you will understand, okay? 
it's better it is better to understand it is easy to understand when you say 10% change in the price so 20% change in the demand so that's why it is normally represented in percentage terms it is termed in percentage okay clear right i can see now 10 people who has got who else i got newly who i have not yeah hi sunny i can see sunny Hi Sunny, how are you? I can see Shurajit, yeah. And I can see Prabha. Prabha, I'm fine, Prabha, how are you? Good, yeah. All of you are understanding, that's good, yeah. It's, uh, Rahul is there. Hi Rahul. It's nice to see all of you again. You're welcome, Prabha. Okay, let's move now, see what you're saying. Uh, and the next thing, uh, I told you it is normally represented or it is normally termed in percentage, especially the price elasticity of demand is the percentage change in quantity demanded due to a percentage change in the price. So it's a ratio, remember this is a ratio. You can say it's a ratio between the percentage change in the quantity demanded, I mean in the quantity demanded or in the quantity due to percentage change in the price. So what will you see? You will see what happened when the price is changing, what, how does it affect the demand of a good in the market? Clear? That's why it is called the price elasticity of demand. That's good, yeah, Antonio is saying it's clear. That's good, I know you people are very intelligent, isn't it? Sometime I will be the, sometime I will be a student and you will be like uh, teaching me some things. Let me know if you can teach me something, please. Oh, Prabha is saying I have sound problem. Prabha, uh, the problem is not from my side because everyone can hear me. So better you look your speaker, yeah, please. Can everyone hear me, please? Yes, everyone is saying, yeah, they can hear me clearly, yeah, that's good, thank you very much. Loud and clear, Rahul is saying, loud and clear, that's good, see. He's saying, KK, okie dokie, let's move them. Now, okay, what I'm saying is, it's clear, right, okay. What he's saying, see, this is availability, uh, this is not very important, I don't want to get involved in it because it will waste the time. I just want to focus on the straight to the topic. Sorry for the things like, can you see the slide or I think you are having some trouble? because it's not exactly showing the content. Let me go back and come back to it again. So it might show again. So it might work. Okay, let's see. Computer price elasticity of demand. Now what he's saying is the price elasticity of demand is computed as the percentage change in the quantity demanded. I have already told you the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price. It means the demand, the demand percentage will be on the top and it will be divided by the percentage change in the price. I mean the quantity of demand will be divided by the price. The percentage of quantity demanded will be divided by the percentage of change of price. Clear? And that will give you straight the result of price elasticity of demand. What exactly happening? You will have some sort of idea what exactly happening. What happen if price changes? What happen uh, in the demand of the uh, commodity? Sometime what happen if it is a luxurious, suppose if it is a luxurious uh, commodity, right? And if you change the price, if you shoot up the price, the people will stop buying it. But if it is a necessary commodity, suppose, just give you an example, suppose flour, people has to buy flour to make bread. So what happens if you change the price a bit of the flour, 
normally people still buy it because this is necessity people cannot avoid it so you have to see what exactly happened what the behavior of the change of the price to the behavior of the uh, demand uh, uh, quantity demanded clear right so that will give you some sort of idea and it is very important when you are studying managerial economics and you are a manager in a company in some point you have to decide that either we should increase the price or not what will happen if we increase the price either we should go should we lower the price or we should increase the price what will happen to what how will it affect the demand so that is very important uh, part of managerial economics and that is very important uh, uh, for decision to take the decision i mean that is very important to study uh, as a manager to take the right decision what you should be doing as a manager of the organization right i told you the very first time managerial economics is the basically practical implementation of the th managerial of economics theory in your workplace managerial economics basically is the practical implementation of the th uh, man uh, economics theories in your workplace okay Did I say that before? I cannot hear. Did I say that before? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Hello. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's move then. Now see, let's go to the next slide. Any problem, just let me know please. See what is saying is that here is a formula. Price elasticity of demand is simple. a uh, percentage change in the quantity demanded so you have to find out first of all uh, you have to find out the percentage change i mean like suppose uh, first uh, there was uh, the in the market 1000 piece were suppose in the market there were 1000 piece uh, demanded of any common commodity right and in for instance and you change the price suppose you lower the price what happened the 2000 piece is demanded it means it means the demand quantity quantity demanded has gone up by 100% is it clear okay that's fine okay now see and percentage change in price so similarly you have to see see a per, uh, percentage change in price so you have to see like uh, the price was before suppose the price was uh, suppose for a car was 300000 uh, or 3 lakh rupees right and now suppose you start uh, just to increase price suppose you make it 330 3 uh, lakhs and 30000 rupees so it means you have increased the price 10% isn't it so you have to put that value over here how much the change in the price the percentage change of of price right clear okay let's go to the next thing so then you will have a clear cut idea the behavior of price uh, the behavior of price elasticity of demand yeah here is an example to make it more clear to you let's see what it says uh if the price of an ice cream cone increase from 2 dollar to 2 dollar 20 pence uh yeah 20 pence and then uh, in england it is pence in uh, i think in america that is uh, called uh, i don't know what is called anyway uh yeah uh 2 dollar to 2 dollar 20 pence and the amount you buy falls from 10 to 8 cones 
sense yeah rahul has yeah rahul you most of the time you have helped me that's good yeah it's called sense yeah yeah so yeah and the amount you buy falls from 10 to 8 counts then uh, your elasticity of demand would be calculated as see what happened exactly the price of cone i the price of uh, ice cream increased from two dollar to two dollar twenty cents right and what happens of course you have to increase the price the demand will automatically fall that is the that is the law of uh, elasticity of demand so the demand will go down so first it was sold 10 it used to be sold 10 pieces 10 ice creams now eight cone is sold so now then your elasticity of demand would be calculated like what what we see so you have to find out the percentage change in the quantity demanded first of all see now see look at it uh first this is the, the first one on the top you can say 10 minus you can see all of you can see the slide right it's working smartly now yeah yeah that's good okay that's fine okay Let, let's see what she says the percentage change in the quantity demanded so first there were demand first demand initial demand was 10 then the demand diminished and uh, uh, went to 8 divided by 10 cross 100 so it's giving you the percentage of change change percentage is giving you change percentage it means 20 percent demand has decreased right okay now and then on the bottom you have to put the uh, price thing so change in the price change percentage change of price so first the price was was two pound and twenty twenty pence right and then they changed the then the price shoot up and went up to uh, sorry it was two dollar then it went to two dollar and twenty cents divided by two so it's giving you the percentage of the change of price that is which is ten percent clear you know how to find out the percentage i hope okay now see so now see what happened I don't know one of this yeah see so it's 20 dollar 20 uh, 20 percentage divided by 10 percentage is simple too so your plus your elasticity price elasticity of demand is 2 okay we'll discuss what happened why it is 2 what if it is a negative if it is more than 1 what will happen or if it is less than 1 what will happen we'll have a look Next, there is another formula to calculate that is called midpoint method or midpoint formula uh, for the price elasticity of demand. We'll have a look to that formula as well now. So the midpoint formula is preferably when calculating the price elasticity of demand because it gives the same answer regardless of the direction of the price change. But it, it gives slightly more accurate value, but it is almost same. Both the prices are almost same right uh both the concepts are almost same let's have a look see how it is calculated see this is the price elasticity of demand it's a q2 minus q1 it means the quantity before and the, the final quantity and the initial quantity divided by the average of both the quantity see this is the average q2 plus q1 divided by 2 that is why it is called midpoint formula okay you got it right and then uh, look at the price it says p2 minus p1 i mean that is the final price and p1 is the initial price right okay and uh, then you take the midpoint of the price or the uh, average of the price that is p2 plus p1 divided by 2 okay is it clear to everyone we will be doing a sort of you know in managerial economics you will be doing some sort of mathematics as well later on more mathematics it will be there so is it clear to everyone right
Yeah, everyone is saying yes, yes, that's good, yeah. No, okay, let's move then. See what the result comes. If the price uh, of an ice cream same, yeah, so uh, this is the same question. Uh, what should be the, how it should be calculated, see. So this is the mid, uh, midpoint method. See, the price was, uh, see, the quantity demanded, well, quantity demanded was 10 before, and then it become 8, so 10 minus 8, right, and divided by the mid or the midpoint of the, or the average of the, both the demand, which is 8 plus 2 divided by 2. Right, and bow and all of them is divided by the change of the price divided by uh, your midpoint or the average of the price. So that's giving you almost 2.32. So 22% divided by 9.5%. So the the result is coming 2.32. So it's almost the almost the same. Um, it gives you some more precise value. That's it. Clear? Any problem? In this method, you don't need to find out the, uh, you, you're not bothered about the percentage. Okay, it will automatically come here. Okay, now let's go to the next slide. Is it clear to everyone, right? Any problem about the midpoint? We have the same formula, uh, we have the same uh, sum, same uh, problem, but we use the different formula here, different method. That's good, okay, clear. Rahul is saying clear, right? I can see. Yep, that's no. Okay, go to the next one. What it says, yeah. Uh, the variety of demand groups. So now in elastic demand, we will be studying now. Now when we make the curve, the demand curve, we can come to know if it is inelastic or if it is elastic or what type of, whether there are a couple of modes, type of uh, demand. So we will be studying that. So let's see what is inelastic demand. Okay. You know the word inelastic means the opposite of elasticity or elastic. See, quantity demand does not respond strongly to price change. See, when you change the price, the quantity demand does not strongly change. It means that might be very chances that that might be a necessary item. People are constrained to buy it. They have to buy it. So, in, and it happens even in a monopoly case as well. When the electricity prices go up, no problem, we will pay you the more money, please give us electricity. Do you understand what I mean? Clear, getting, yeah, that's good, yeah. I can see the responses from all of you, that's fine, okay. The quantity demanded does not respond strongly to price change. Price elasticity of demand is less than 1. See, it means, see, in the previous calculation, we have a value which shows more than 1. If the value shows more than 1, it means the demand is very elastic. It is, the demand is price elastic. It means if the price will change, the demand will also change. And here on the top, you see, it says in elastic demand, it says price elasticity of demand is less than 1 if the value after division, if the value is less than 1, it may be point something. Then if it is less than 1, then it means that is that uh, demand is inelastic. I mean, it will not be strongly changed when the price changes. Because that's why I told you people are... People have to buy it. They are constrained to buy it. It may be a necessary item, very necessary. Okay? Or there may be more, yeah, it may, uh, and it happens mostly in the, when there is a, no competitors in the markets. And someone has got monopoly about it. Okay? And you know, you know these things. Let's go, say, an elastic demand, quantity demanded response is strongly to change in price. Yeah, if you change the price, the demand will strongly change. Ups and uh, goes ups and down. 
right so that's why what happened if within a uh, within if you go to the high street with a lot of shops available if there are a lot of shops available then you have to be as a manager or as a uh, like as a um, businessman you have to be very careful uh, when you change uh, when you think to change the price because people will if you change the price and people will have the same commodity for less price to the another shops all the customer will be moving to the another shops that's a very our general perception isn't it even i even i go for different shops to different shops i can i see where the less prices are available for a commodity is it clear right so that is called elastic demand now let's go move to the next thing what it says see here you have a look it's a lovely picture i, I think i'm getting good picture today is better not to get uploaded before it is better to top uh, to get it uploaded from your desktop that's now my experience anyway see what is saying computing the price elasticity of demand see what exactly happening see when the price of a commodity any commodity of any product of anything the price was four dollar demand was 100 quantity can you see that right yeah the demand was Hundred quantity. When the price shoots up, like twenty-five percent, I mean the new price is now five dollar. See, it has the price has gone up by twenty-five percent. Remember, but see now the quantity demanded is fifty percent. It means what has happened? The quantity demanded has gone down by fifty percent, while the price has gone up twenty-five percent. You got it? it means this is very elastic in elastic the uh, demand you will get a curve like this now okay let's go to the next one see yeah it's it's, it's been calculated over here as well 10 minus 50 divided by they have used the midpoint formula over here if you remember, so C67 percentage minus 27 percentage is minus 3, and that is the less, that is the, uh, that is minus 3 is less than 1. And when it is less than 1, it means it is elastic. It is elastic in nature. The demand is elastic, right? Is it clear to everyone? any problem in the calculation they have used a midpoint formula you can use the normal formula the percentage formula as well that's not a problem can i move forward right okay okay See, I told you the demand is price elastic. That's called price elastic because the value is less than one. Now, what happened? See, the next question is the variety of the demand curves. Perfectly elastic, perfectly inelastic, perfectly elastic, and unit elastic. The one we studied that was perfectly elastic. Okay? And if the price is not making changes, the value will be more than one or what more than one, that then it will be uh, perfectly uh, inelastic. And if the value is coming around one unit, one the, the answer is one coming or almost one, it means you can say that is unit elastic. Let's see let's see some examples so that it, get, it should be very clear to us. Because the price elasticity of demand measures how much quantity demanded response to the price. It is closely related to the slope of the demand curve. She's saying because the price elasticity of demand measure how much quantity demanded response to the price. As we have already discussed about it, it is closely related to the slope of the demand curve, right? But it is not the same thing as the slope. Then what happened in that case? 
the variety of that shape. See, we are going to now study an example of perfectly inelastic demand, which is inelastic, not changing. When the change of price is there, but still the demand is not changing. What happened in that case, and what type of curve comes C? You can see, right? Okay. Let me explain to you. One second, I've gone back. Now, have a look. C is saying like uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the commodity, the price initial price was four dollar, and the amount uh, and the quantity demanded was hundred, right? Now the price shoots up by twenty five percent, which went to like fifty five dollar. But see, the quantity, the demand is still is not making any difference. Still, it is required by hundred. The quantity required is 100 units, isn't it? Right? You can do the mathematic calculation now. If you but you can do in your leisure time, you can do these calculations with the, that formula. So, so what will happen in that case? The, the, uh, it means the the demand is perfectly inelastic. It's not changing. It means it may be a very necessary item. People cannot avoid it. And that's why sometimes what the people do, they do storage things as well. And a lot of black markets happen because of that thing, because it's a very necessary item. People have to buy it. See, go to the next one uh, about it. Yeah, see. The price elasticity of demand. Now, inelastic demand is less, is less than one. Yeah, when you calculate, when you calculate exactly what will happen, yeah, uh, what will happen? The result will be less than one. If you want to do the calculation now, you can do it. See, see is that this is the inelastic demand. Elasticity is less than one. Now see the price elasticity of demand is the inelastic demand. So elasticity in inelastic, I told you, a, a like inelastic demand will be less than, uh, will be always, the result will be always less than 1. How? See what happened. Uh, the price has gone from 4 to, it was first $4 and then gone up. It's now $5. Right, so how it happens, what exactly happened, you see the price when the dollar was 4, then the quantity demanded 100, quantity was demanded. Then the price gone up slightly by 1 dollar, then, then the quantity demanded is 90 units. It leads to an 11% decrease in the quantity demanded and it is leading a 22% increase in the price. Okay, you got it, right? Now, see what happened if you do the calculation. It's an example of inelastic demand. Yeah, let's go to the unit elastic demand now. What will happen? It will be going smoothly. Like the the more the price increase, the more the demand increase, and in, it will be going with an appropriate appro, uh, proportion in a fixed ratio form. Right? See. If you have a look here, suppose from 100 to 80, 
is 22%. And this is the increase in price is also 22%. So the increase in quantity is also 22%. So when you divide 22 by 22, when you divide the change of price, when you divide the change of demand by the change of price, the result will be 1. Isn't it? Clear? So 22 divided by 22 simply result will be 1. So that is, the, that is an example of unit elastics, unit elastic demand. I mean that demand is unit elastic. So what happened? I mean that is, what is unit elastic demand? That is the mid, that is the midpoint of elastic demand and inelastic demand. In elastic demand, what happens? When you change the price, demand will not change. And in what will happen in, in uh, elastic demand, what will happen? When you change the price, the price, uh, the demand will change severely. But in unit demand, when you change the price, the demand will change, but to some extent. So that's why it remains one or near to one. So that's why the unit elasticity basically is the middle of elasticity and inelasticity of demand. You got it my you got my point? Can everybody hear me please? I need to check every time. Sometime happen I keep saying and you're not listening. <laughs> what will happen then? Hi, Suret. I saw you first time now. How are you? Surajit, yeah. It's clear, right? Okay, that's good. Baba, you are okay? Are you understanding everything? Yeah, Baba is saying it's okay. Yeah, getting clear, right? That's good. Now, see, go to the next one. So remember, elastic demand is greater than 1, and inelastic demand will be lesser than 1, and that is which is 1, or almost 1, very close to 1, that will be unit elastic of demand. Now you can see the curve is getting slowly horizontal, right? I mean, if the curve, suppose, I tell you one thing, if the curve is very vertical, you know horizontal and vertical lines, right? If the curve, suppose, is very... You got it? Hello? Yeah. See, if the curve is very vertical, it means the demand is very elastic. Yeah, and if the curve is exactly going 40 to the 40, uh, 45 degree angle, I mean, it's a straight line, it means that is unit. The more the price is going up, the, similarly the demand is going like with the same ratio. And if the curve is getting horizontal, it means the demand is more uh, inelastic. Okay? Let's see. See, look at this curve. It's going more horizontal now. From vertical to horizontal. Right? Okay, that's clear. Okay, next, next, now go, please, move, for, uh, slightly move forward, see what happened in that case. One second. Now see, uh, see what it says, 22% increase in price. See, at least to a 67 increase, 
percent in decrease in the quantity demanded. But that's exactly, uh, see, it was 155, so it's saying 67 percent decrease in the demanded. Right? Now, see, when you divide, what will be the answer? It will be greater than 1. Why? 67 will be divided by 22. So, of course, the result will be around 3 point something. Because 22, 3 is a 66. So, it will be 3.1 something. And that value is more than 1. It means that is elastic. It's changing. Exactly. Okay, you got it? Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I did a mistake. Uh, I, I, I'm taking my words back. If the curve, if the demand curve is getting more horizontal, it means that is elastic. And if the demand, if the, if the demand curve, which is in blue color, you can see, if the demand curve is getting more vertical, it is mean it is inelastic. Okay? Clear? Now, let's see. Now, we are going to see the perf price elasticity of demand, the perfectly elastic demand. Elastic demand, elasticity units, uh, yeah, elasticity equals infinity. See how it happens. Look at this result. See. What exactly happening? See here, look at it. Uh, it's saying the price is the perfectly elastic demand elasticity equals infinity. See, uh, number one, at, at any price above $4, quantity demanded is zero. Yeah, at exactly $4, consumer will buy any quantity. See, what happening is here, when at a price below $4, quantity demanded is infinite. Why? It will be divided by zero. You will, you will see the calculation soon. See, at any price above $4, quantity demanded is zero. If mean, it means if you increase the price, by four dollar, people will not buy it. And if you decrease the price by four dollar, then the demand is infinite. Huge demand. Okay? How? See. Let's see the calculation. That's called perfectly elastic demand or elasticity equals infinity. That is called infinity. See. You can do the some sort of calculation. I think we haven't got the calculation over here, but you have got the value. So you can do some calculation, and uh, later on uh, you can come back to me like with your calculation. What exactly it's saying? So we studied three. We studied. Let me uh, just up all the things we, uh, the three main things we have studied, uh, uh, like three types of uh, elasticity of demand. That is inelastic, elastic, and unit. So when you change the price, the demand change uh, rapidly, severely, then that is called elastic in nature. Okay, and that will be uh, right. Uh, the curve will be more uh, vertical. Okay, now when you change the price, like suppose if you're changing one percent price, right, the demand also uh, decrease one percent. If you increase the two percent price the demand also decreases 2%. It means 2 divided by 2 will be 1. So that will be, I mean, the way with the ratio, you are changing the price with the same ratio, uh, the demand is increasing or decreasing. So that is called the unit one, unit, uh, uh, unit elasticity of demand. But in some cases, when you change the price 
demand doesn't decrease or increase. The demand is st remains stagnant. So that's called inelastic demand. Clear? So in that case, the value will be less than 1. Clear? And in unit elasticity of demand, value will be 1 or almost 1. And in elastic demand, value will be more than 1. Is it clear? Everyone can hear me, please? I don't know my, why my thing is, yeah. Okay. Now, oh, I can see. Let's go to the next one. See why it is important to learn? Because it is directly linked with your total revenue. Because your sales is basically is your total revenue. How it is, that's why it is very important to learn as a manager. See, total revenue and the price elasticity of demand. How, why? See, total revenue is the amount paid by buyers and received by sellers of a good. Right? Suppose if you're doing a business and suppose you're selling cars every day, right? So you one day you sold, suppose, around 100 cars. I wish you do this. So suppose you, you sell 100 cars one day and you see like you got almost 100,000 pounds, now you see that is your total revenue. That is your total revenue. So compared to the price of the good time as the quantity sold. So total revenue is basically the product of, is the product of the price sold by the quantity. Like suppose the price of one quantity is uh, 1 lakh rupees and you sold 100 quantities so it will be 100, uh, 100 cross uh, what should I say like suppose if you selling the price 1 lakh rupees per, like a car is 1 lakh and you're selling 100 cars so it, it means 100, 100, 100 lakhs it is 100 lakhs simply so that is your total revenue so how does it make difference uh, sometimes why you need to know to make a decision if you need to change the price or not it will you will come to know soon now have a look see can you see the slide right okay see what he's saying is uh, there is a commodity, the price of the commodity is four dollar and the quantity demanded is hundred. So the to total uh, revenue will be four cross hundred, that I told you P into Q. So price is the four and the quantity is required is hundred dollar. So four four is a four hundred is a four hundred. Four hundred dollar is your total revenue. Right? Now See, when the price is $4, consumers will demand 100 units and spend 100 on this good. So, is it clear? Now, let's go to the next slide, then it will be, you will understand then why we are starting this thing. See, what happens with an elastic demand curve, if it is inelastic demand curve, right, is, suppose it's not changing. It is inelastic. An increase in the price leads to decrease in the quantity that is proportionally smaller. Thus, total revenue increases. Of course, total revenue will increase. If you have a monopoly, if you have a business, like no one is doing that business, you can charge more money, you can increase your price, people will pay you. So that will, that will uh, ultimately increase your revenue, isn't it? That will generate revenue for you, right? What happens, that is in that case, like if the demand is inelastic. So you can charge whatever you want. And what will happen if in elastic case demand?
every time I'm going to the next slides and then I come back. Uh, you know why it's happening, right? See, what exactly going on here? See, look at the first one on my left hand side. When the price is one dollar, the demand is the hundred unit. So it means the revenue is one cross hundred is hundred. Hundred dollar is the total revenue. Is it clear? Uh, okay. Now go to the yeah. See, and now an increase in the price. Now the price has increased by three dollar. Now you have increased. First you were charging one dollar for one unit. Now you are charging three dollar for one unit. So now and now the demand has gone down slightly. Now there was at the beginning there were hundred piece. 100, uh, 100 units were demanded, but now 80 units were demanded. Demanded. So now, okay, see it's gone by almost 20%, but exactly when you do the calculation, you know. So from 100 to 80, the unit has gone down. So what will happen, the total revenue now is 3 cross 80, so it will be 240. See, your total revenue is more. It was first, it was because you have increased the price a lot, you have increased the price almost 200 times, yeah, or 300 times, yeah, it was one and now you made it to, like it is almost, almost that thing. So you have double of double you are charging, almost not 150% you are charging, but the price, the demand has slowly dropped down. See, so it means it is inelastic. It is not dropping severely. Is it clear? You are charging much and much more money, but the demand but that might be very necessary stuff or necessary commodity for the people. People have to buy it. So in that case, you can earn, you can you can make more money if you know, yeah, your commodity price is is inelastic. It will not be changed. If you have a monopoly or some other reason, quality-wise, people will still pay you because you are the best. You have the best quality in the market. So you change. What will you do in that case? You will decide as a manager. You will decide. Let's increase the price, and that will generate some revenue for you. Clear? We are starting in a very simple manner today. So that everyone can understand. Okay, let's go to the next one then. Now see elasticity and total revenue along a linear demand curve. See with an elastic demand curve, an increase in the price leads to a decrease in quantity demanded that is proportionately larger. Thus total revenue decreases. What happen? Like if it is elastic demand, what will happen? An increase in the price leads to a decrease in quantity demand. I mean that will be severe. It is so. I mean it is so flexible. If you increase the price, it the demand will severely drops down. So you have to be careful then. If you do so, in the end of the day, you have less revenue. See how it works. Yeah. Now have a look at it. Every time I think if there is something to. Now look at it. See at the first uh, first figure on my left hand side it says when there was four dollar for one unit, the demand was okay.
50 is 200 dollar right you got it now what happened an increase in the price from four dollar to five dollar now you have increased the price first you were charging four dollar now you are charging five dollar you have increased one dollar in each unit see your demand has drastically gone down now when you just increase one dollar now you can only sell out now you can only sell out 20 pieces 20 units so now you see your, your total revenue is how much hundred dollar isn't it thank you very much Rashid for the appreciation okay see uh, similarly if you look at it the first revenue was 200 percent okay you got it now oh, there are uh, okay see note that the, with each price increase oh we are running short of time now I have to be quick uh, that with each price increase the law of demand is still holds an increase in price leads to a decrease in the quantity demanded it is the charge uh, and it, it is change in TR and the total revenue that varies okay now you got it so as a manager you have to be very careful if your commodity if your uh, product your good is uh, elastic in demand elastic uh, in elastic nature in demand then uh, you have to be very careful when you change the price and when you look at the product side so like your product is really stable and there's no competitors a very good quality or that you have been having monopoly then you increase the price because that is inelastic it is not changeable so if you increase the price you can you can uh, make more money you can generate more revenue clear right we have a lot of slides more but I don't think so we can finish it today because there are a lot more detail to study about it so in the next class we'll continue with it is it okay I'm leaving uh, I here I'm going to turn on my video I think I've been told any question or any conception in your mind please ask me I will reply you yeah one day I would like to see one by one each of you and I would like to talk to you as well because I want to know all of you one day so any question if you have please ask me uh, we are left with two minutes now only is 558 Rinin Shanin is saying okay Rashid uh, Rashid yeah Rashid is saying great okay see you again no problem uh, always I would appreciate your advices and your and your opinions your feedbacks they are very important for us because on the basis Prabha is thank you very much Prabha is saying thank you thank you Prabha uh, thank you all the best oh yeah someone is asking me any chance uh, sir can I get these slides of course you will get it let me finish it I tried to upload it it is already uploaded there so that time it was not available but you can download it I think so I have already uploaded that one on the this IQ platform. So if still there is any problem, so let me know. Okay, and uh, then what I will do, uh, I will uh, get it uploaded or I will provide it. I will talk to the students up here to provide you. Uh, thank you very much, Antonio and uh, Surajit. Thank you very much. Uh, all of you have a very rest of the good evening. Uh, rest of the evening. Uh, very good evening and uh, still I am here okay you can uh, if you uh, I would like to have your feedback so suggestion that really help us a lot you have a happy weekend as well in India it's not weekend but here it is weekend but this is not weekend for me because I have a class tomorrow as well my weekend happens on Tuesday 
Anyway, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Oh, I'll see you, uh, some of you, I think I have a class tomorrow early in the morning. So, okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. That's good, you are going to join the next class. Of course, you should join because in the end of the day you get something. All the best, you have a very nice, lovely evening. Thank you, bye-bye.